Hi, welcome to this video. Today we're going to take a look at onboarding AOS switch stacks into Aruba Central. It's one of the fairly recent enhancements with Aruba Central itself. Joining me today is Kamal Takodra, one of my colleagues from the technical marketing engineering team like myself. We work close together. So Kamal, how's it going? Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Justin, thanks for having me here. So I guess today you're going to show us how to onboard AOS switch stack with UI groups. That's absolutely correct, Kamal. So today uh, we wanted to go over how to onboard a stack using the UI configuration. It's a fairly recent addition. Um, you can also use the UI groups, as we'll show in a future video, how to configure a switch with the UI groups. You can already pre-configure that and then uh, onboard the stack, which would get the configuration from what's already been previously configured. I know we've had templates for a while for AOS Switch. What's the difference between using templates and UI groups? So with templates, you have to make sure all the configuration is correct within the configuration template. And that has to match exactly how it would go into the operating system. So it's as if you copy and pasted the configuration from the template file into your console window. If you make any changes, you have to change the entire template, and then the entire template has to be synchronized to the switch or switches, so it can be very tedious. UI groups, you can actually make the changes in the UI for individual switches, so it's a lot simpler to configure. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to use the UI group to onboard a stack. So kind of as a prerequisite, um, I'd assume that you'd have your switches already onboarded and loaded and licensed and ready to go. Um, as a customer, that could happen in the background by your account team. For this demo, I'm, since I'm an employee, I'm running out of the internal account and I need to manually add my devices into that. So if you need to do that, how you can do that is you can go into your account home and device inventory and then you can click on add devices and from here you can add serial numbers and MAC addresses of your devices. So I have my switches already preloaded, ready to go. And since I already have them ready and licensed, uh, the next step would be to create a group. So to create a group, we need to go into our main network operations window. And once it's loaded, we can go here to the navigation window up here, and we can see groups. Uh, we can click on the little gear wheel, and that takes us to our groups page. And then from here, we can create a new group. So we can select new group, and uh, if we wanted to create another group, we could give it a group name. Uh, if we're going to do a template group, we'd want to select the device, but in this, for this purpose, we're doing a UI group, and then from here we would assign a password, a group password for that. It's important to note the password that you set here, any switch that logs in, that uh, onboards into this group is going to get that password. So it's important to note, uh, make sure you configure your password accordingly. So I'm not going to continue here since I already have a group created, so we're going to use this AOS-S UI group already in there. And so I have my Devices, factory reset, and ready to go. Uh, so from here I can go to my group, have that ready. Uh, we can actually keep the devices here and we'll go back and forth as devices come up. And so we can show how to configure the stack. So my next step is I'm going to power on my switches. Okay, so now we have our first switch rebooting coming up. And once it reboots, it'll get its IP address, and then it'll get access to the internet and uh, contact the central server, and then central subscription will be there, so then central can onboard the device, and it'll show up as unprovisioned. Okay, so now our switch has come up. So from our group mem menu, after it's gotten its IP address, it's now reached out to Central. We can see here is the switch that we just booted. So we can now copy that into our group. So 
and we'll drag it over here to the AOS-S UI group. And once we've done that, then we can go over to our group, see our list of devices, and there's our switch. It's shown up as online. So there's our switch. So we can click on our switch, and now we can configure it. So if we select the switch, we can then go into the device menu, and then to stacks, and we can start configuring our stack. So here it's already shown up as conductor because we're doing a backplane stack. So it's basically auto stacking when you're using the, the stacking hardware. But what we want to do, we're going to form a two-member stack. So we need to add our other stack members in there so it can strict provision the stack. And that way the member is already in the configuration, so all we have to do is then reboot our second factory default switch or power up our second factory default switch to do that. So we're going to click the little plus here, and we're running the same model as the conductor, the current conductor, so we can save that. And so now we already have a placeholder uh, with the priority already set. It's already got a role, and it's inactive currently. So our next step is we need to go now power on our second switch. So we'll go back to our configuration here, and then we'll go into our switch and power it on. So once we boot the conductor, we just need to make sure that other stack members are provisioned in central before booting them. Yes, yeah, so as you just saw, we're basically manually provisioning the stack. So you get the conductor up, then you provision your other members, and then all you have to do is just boot them up. So we powered up our second switch. Now it's booting up. So after it boots, uh, we should be able to see it in our stack list in Central. So let's go ahead and let it finish rebooting. So while it's booting, we can log into our conductor and see the stack, show the stack status. So we can run the command show stack, and we can see that the standby is already booting. So it's as soon as the standby comes up, it'll be synchronized with the uh, conductor. So note it says commander here. We are working on changing our language to more inclusive language. So in a future software release, this should reflect conductor. So now our standby has finished booting. And we can go back to our conductor. And we can see that the standby has formed. See that we ran a few show stack commands to see the status when, it, when the standby was fully booted. So now it's fully booted. So now we can go back to central. Uh, we'll refresh the page here. So now we can see that our standby is active and fully formed. If we go to the interfaces, we can see all the ports that are listed. So we can see we have member two ports here. Uh, if we go to the overview of the device, uh, we can see we have two stack members and we're ready to go. And they're both showing up as well on the overview page. Wow, that was super easy. Thanks for showing us how to create a stack using UI groups. No problem, Kamal. Thanks for being here with me. I hope this was beneficial for you and everyone else. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, appreciate the time in watching this video.